Hi Nerdy Knitters! In this video we're doing a full tutorial for a beginner scarf. You'll learn everything you need to know. You'll learn how to cast on and bind off, how to knit and purl, how to read your stitches, your garter stitches and in stockinette, and how to work a yarn over and a knit two together and create some eyelets for a little decorative touch. Everything you need to learn how to knit is in this video. You can learn how to make this scarf with one ball of scarfy yarn and the pattern. You can find the link for this right down below. Download your own copy of the pattern. And if you want to jump to any point in the video, use the timestamp links in the video description box down below. This scarf is going to need the pattern. You can find it linked down below to get your copy. Um, some knitting needles, US 9 or 5.5 millimeter, and one ball of Scarfy Lion Brand yarn. All you need is just this one. You can pick it up at any big box store and you can knit this scarf. I'm just going to use a smaller sample yarn today since I'm not going to knit a whole scarf in this video. First, let's look at the pattern. We have our finished measurements. The scarf is 7 inches wide and 70 inches long. And if your gauge down here matches mine, then your finished measurements will be the same. If your gauge is different, then it could be smaller or bigger. It's a scarf, so it's not so imperative. And we also have our materials. The yarn that we just looked at, Lion Brand Scarfy, one ball of that. Your needles, and then you'll need a tapestry needle and some scissors at the end to weave in your ends. And then down here, we have abbreviations because our pattern takes up a whole page here, so to shorten things up, abbreviations are very common in knitting patterns. Otherwise, they'd get quite long, and for magazines and small pamphlets especially, they want to keep those short. So, this scarf is a perfect introduction if you're a brand new knitter. We'll cover everything new knitters would need to know, and it's all split into sections. We'll start with section one. It will tell you how many to cast on when you download your pattern. I'm just going to cast on 15 today, which is not the amount in the finished pattern, but just enough to do a sample. So we'll start with a knit cast on, which starts with a slip knot. So you take your tail of yarn and put it between your thumb, your first finger, wrap it around your fingers, and then wrap it around again, but underneath the first wrap. Then you insert your needle between the two and pull that second one through. You can drop your yarn and give it a little tug and you have your first stitch, your slip knot acts as your first stitch. Once you have that on there, you can start putting your stitches on. So you insert into that slip knot, take your right needle right underneath your left, take your yarn, not the tail, but the yarn, wrap it, bring it up and around from right to left and draw that new loop through hold them parallel to each other, and put that stitch on the left needle. And you can tighten it up at this point. And you have two stitches now on your needle. So continue doing this. Insert, wrap the yarn, pull it through, place it on the needle. Insert, wrap the yarn, not the tail. Oops, drop that one. Insert, wrap, pull it through, put it on the needle. All right, so continue doing this for the number of stitches you need to cast on, and then meet me back here for the next step. Okay, I have my stitches cast on. Then our next instruction tells us we're going to knit every row until there are 15 garter ridges. So we start with our knit stitch. Your empty needle's in your right hand and all of your cast on stitches are on the needle in your left. Doesn't matter if you're right or left handed, you'll hold your needles this way. You're gonna use both hands anyway. The first thing to do to work the knit stitch is insert, just like you did for the cast on. Insert into that first stitch right underneath the left needle. Wrap the yarn up and around. 
pull the new stitch through and now drop that stitch off the left needle. And that is all you do to knit. You insert, wrap, pull through, drop the stitch off. It's four steps. Insert, wrap, pull through, drop the stitch off the left needle. Insert, wrap, pull it through, drop it off. Insert, wrap, pull it through, drop it off. Insert, wrap, pull it through, drop it off. So continue doing this across your row of knitting until you finish the whole row. Here, at the end of the row, the last few. Okay, last stitch. And when you finish your last one and drop it off your left needle, now all of your new stitches are in your right hand. Your empty needle is in your left. So we switch things around. Put that empty needle in the right. Put your work in your left. Keep the tail out of the way. Your working yarn is right down here. Make sure it stays down. Don't pull it up over your needle. Keep it down like that. And you'll do the same thing going across this way. Insert, wrap the yarn, pull it through, drop it off. So keep knitting across this row. All right, now I want you to think about how you're holding the yarn because you have to insert and pick it up and wrap it around. So try holding it in your hand. You can try holding it in your left hand. I like to wrap it around my thumb and use my finger. It's the same movement up and around the needle. Drop it off. Insert, wrap, pull it through, drop it off. The yarn is still being wrapped around the needle in the same way. I just don't have to drop it between each stitch, which means I can knit faster. I'll use my left hand for this row and then on the next row I'll demonstrate with my right. There's another row done so we turn things around and you can see we have some ridges starting to form here along the bottom and that's what our instructions tell us. We're going to keep working until we have 15 of these ridges. So on this row, I'll put the yarn in my right hand. Now you just find a way that's easy for you to hold it. You could wrap it around your fingers and use this finger to keep it tensioned the same. We refer to the tension that helps us control how much yarn is going around the needle and around our finger. If I just leave it really loose, that yarn stays really loose, but I can wrap it around some fingers and that helps tighten it up a little bit so it's not so loose. And we're still wrapping the same, coming up and underneath and over, just like that. Insert, wrap, pull it through. So you want to keep trying, maybe do a few rows with your right hand and then a few rows with your left and see which one feels more comfortable. It could take quite a while until it really starts to feel comfortable. That's completely normal. You just find a method of holding the yarn that you find easy to do. As long as the needle, needles and the yarn are getting wrapped and used the same way. It doesn't matter how you hold the yarn. There. It's still going around the needle from right to left, up and over. Get that last stitch on there. And now we've transferred all of those stitches. We've worked them and now they're all on our right needle. And the left needle's empty, so we turn it around again. And you can see those ridges. 
There we go. We've got these big ridges here. I'm going to work a few more rows and then I'll show you what those look like. There, I've worked a few more rows and now you can really see these ridges that are starting to form. If you pull it apart especially, you can see these big raised areas. We call that a garter ridge. When we knit every row, the fabric that results is called garter stitch. It's very stretchy and it produces these rib, these ridges right across the fabric. So our pattern tells us how many of those we need to have. So you'll knit until you have the required number of ridges. And we can look at that in the finished scarf. Right here on the end, we've got lots of garter stitch right there. You can see all of those ridges and how stretchy that is. And then once you've done enough of that, we'll move on to this section right here. We call this the stockinette, stockinette with pearl ridge section. There, that one's a bit dark. Let me find a, there's another section. It's the same right there. So we're going to work on this section next. Once you have your first section complete, we'll look at section two of our pattern. It's right here. We're going to knit a row which you know how to do. And then we'll introduce the purl stitch. So knit your first row of this section of the pattern and meet me back here for the next row. I finished knitting my row. My next row is a purl row. This is the second stitch that you'll find in knitting. Knitting and purling are the two stitches you need to do everything you'll have to do. So our yarn is here. When we knit, we had it down into the back, but for purling, we keep it to the front of the work, still down, but now it's to the front. And we insert this way, what's called purl wise. A knit stitch goes like that, parallel to each other into the stitch. Purl wise goes this way from right to left. And we take that yarn, we wrap it around our needle, we bring it up and over, we pull that stitch through, and drop the stitch off. And that is a purl stitch. Insert, bring the yarn up and over and hold it while we pull it through and pull that stitch off. And that is how you purl. Insert, wrap, pull it through, drop it off. There, just like that, insert wrap, pull it through, drop it off. This one will feel odd at first as well until you get used to the movement. So whichever hand you're holding the yarn in for your knitting, just keep it in that hand and purl across this row. Insert purl wise, wrap, pull it through and drop that stitch off. Now when we work these two rows, when you purl, when you knit on one on the front and you purl across the back, you get this flat section. Under here we have our garter ridges, and then right there you can see we're starting to get these little V's, these little stitches. That's stockinette fabric. So I'm going to knit across this row again. There I finished knitting. You can see this is starting to grow, this section here. So we turn our work and we purl another row. Insert, wrap, pull it through and drop it off. So purl across this row. Here I've done another two rows of knitting on the front, purling across the back. We did that twice and our pattern says we need to do that for six rows. So I'm going to do that one more time and then we'll see where we're at. There, I follow the pattern. We knit a row, purl a row, and then repeat that two more times. 
and we get this section right here, this stockinette is what this is called. Each of these columns of V's is a row of stitches. And if you look, look at this stitch on the needle, it's right in the middle of a V. Each of these V's is a stitch. And you want to see six of these right there, and you'll know you've done six rows. We knit a row, purled a row, knit a row, purl a row, knit a row, purl a row, and we're back here on the front of our work. And our next instruction after we do those six rows is to purl two rows. So now we're going to purl across the front of this work. This is what it's gonna look like when we're done. There's our garter section to start with. And then we did our stockinette. And there's a purl ridge right there. I'm gonna do that right now. And you can see we do more stockinette and we have these little ridges right in the middle to give it a little decorative touch. So we're on the front. This is what the back looks like right now. It's all those bumps and ridges. But that stockinette's nice and flat on the front. So we're going to purl on this side. So we bring our yarn to the front of our work. It's still down here, but to the front. We purl across this row. And that puts the heads of the stitch on the front. You can see we're making these little bumps right on the front of our work. Insert, wrap, pull it through. And as we pull it through, look at the stitch that's coming off. That bump, that head of the stitch sitting right here and we're getting these bumps on the front of our fabric. So purl across this row and then we'll purl across the next row. That's what our instructions say and see how that looks. There I'm back on the right side of my work again. You can see all the knits and purls produce the stockinette and then we purled across right here and purled back and that gives us this ridge right across there. We're going to repeat that section, the knitting and purling six times, six for six rows, and then that purl ridge. You can see it here. Here's a better part of it right there. We did the stockinette, the purl ridge, so you're gonna repeat that three more times ending with that purl ridge right there. And that gives us this part of our pattern. I call that the stockinette with purl ridges. So we start with garter, then we do that stockinette with purl ridges, and then we have a new garter section, but this one you'll see has some holes in it. Those are called eyelets. We use yarn overs to make those decorative holes. And that is the next part of the pattern. We finished, once you finish section two, follow all of that, repeating your rows three more times. We move on to section three, which is our garter and eyelet. Now this is where knitting gets fun. We're gonna introduce some new things to make it a little more interesting. And this is also where people might get a little confused when they see something like this right here all of these weird symbols and stars and punctuation, they're not quite sure what's going on. And that's where these abbreviations are important. They tell us exactly what those instructions mean. So we're gonna just take it very slow and do one thing at a time. Our first row here tells us K2, that means knit two. So we'll knit two stitches. There's our first two. The next instruction has a little star, and that means a repeat from this star to this star. It's got a few instructions, and then it says REP means repeat from that star to the last stitch, and then we'll knit one. So these instructions in here will repeat across the whole length of our fabric, all of our stitches until we get to that last stitch. So it says Y-O, it's the first thing after the star. Y-O means yarn over, that's an increased stitch. When you add a yarn over, you're adding another stitch to your stitch count. I have 15 stitches right now. 
So if I add a stitch, I'll have 16. So a yarn over, we've been knitting, so our yarn's back here. All you need to do is bring it up and around and over your needle. Plant your finger on it to hold it there. And that's a yarn over. When you work your next stitch, it locks that in place and it adds a stitch to your stitch count. So our instruction says from that star, we've already done our knit two, yarn over, knit one. We have a K1, that means knit one. So we take our yarn, put it in whatever hand it's comfortable, bring it up, you're underneath your needle, you're bringing it to the front and up and over that needle and holding it there. And we do our knit one, we knit our next stitch. And now we can drop that because that yarn over is now, it's trapped there. And you can see it creates a hole, a decorative hole, just like we see in that fabric right there. You can see all of the little holes. Those are made with yarn overs. Okay, so we did our yarn over, our knit one, and then it says K2TOG. That means, well, a K2 looks like this up here, knit two. TOG means together. Knit two together, that is a decreased stitch. It's to compensate for the yarn over where we increased by one. Now we're going to work two stitches as one stitch to decrease the stitch and get our stitch count to be the same. So when we knit one, we insert right there and knit. When we knit two together, we come into the second stitch on our left needle and into the first. Now we're inserting into both of those stitches, wrapping a yarn and knitting and dropping them both off. So those two stitches have now become one. That's a knit two together. And now we can see, it says repeat from that little asterisk, that star those instructions all over again. Yarn over, knit one, knit two together. We're gonna to keep doing that part right there, what's between the stars, to the last stitch. So we yarn over again. Here, I'll use my right hand this time so you can see what that looks like. Yarn over still goes the same way. It's coming underneath and up and around. And my finger's holding the yarn there already, so it's all right. We insert. We knit, oops, knit that stitch. And that yarn over is now locked in place. And our next instruction was a knit two together. So insert, remember two, the second stitch, and into the first, wrap the yarn, pull it through, drop them both off. And there we have our little repeat again. That's the second time we've been through those instructions. So we do that again. Yarn over the needle. Hold it there. Knit one. And then knit two together. And we're still not down to our final stitch over here. So we can keep doing that repeat. Yarn over. Knit one. Knit two together. Oh, and we only have one stitch left. And that's what our thing, our repeat here said, repeat from the star to the last stitch, and then we knit one. We have one stitch left, so we knit that stitch. And then our instructions tell us for the next few rows, we're going to knit, and we know how to knit, but let's take a look at how we're gonna work those yarn overs on this row. We knit across our stitches. There's one of those yarn overs. You can see it makes a big hole. We're going to treat it just like a knit stitch. We insert right in the middle of that hole, just like that, wrap the yarn, pull it through, and drop that stitch off. And that makes a nice decorative eyelet in our work. Insert into the hole, wrap, pull it through, and drop it off. There's that hole, we can wrap, insert. One more right there. If 
And that is our eyelet row right there. You'll do that for the whole length of your scarf, that row, and then you'll continue knitting. And then you repeat that again. Here's a section right here. There's that eyelet row, and then a few more rows of garter, knitting every row, and then that eyelet row again, and a few more rows of garter, and that eyelet row one more time. And then we go back to our stockinette and pearl ridges. We do our knit a row, pearl a row for a few rows, and then that ridge. So those are the two main sections of the scarf. You'll have just the section of garters just at the beginning, and then you repeat that stockinette with the pearl ridges, and then garter with some eyelets, more stockinette with pearl ridges, more garter with eyelets, all across the scarf, right to the other end where we'll do more garter, but this time we'll do it in pearl. So remember, we insert this way to pearl, just like that. And then after you finish that last section of garter right there, you'll bind off in pearl. And binding off just means we have to do something to close up these stitches because if we just pull our needle out, it's going to unravel all our work. So we need to bind off. And it's really very simple. I've purled two stitches already. So to bind the first stitch off, I just insert my needle into that first stitch and bring it up and over the second one. And I've bound off one stitch. Then I purl another stitch. Now I have two stitches on my needle. We pull that first one up and over the second stitch. Purl another row or another stitch. Bring it up and over. So you'll follow the instructions in your pattern. For each of the sections, it's broken down into 15 sections. And that final section, you'll be working that garter, purling every row, and then binding off purl-wise, which means you're just purling the stitches as you bind them off. You can, the normal bind off is to just knit and bind off the stitches, which is the same thing, except you would knit before you bind off but we're going to do a purl row bind off for this scarf. So you would purl the stitches as you pull them over each other. And you continue that across the row. You have the final two right here. Pull that one up and over that final stitch. And then you just have to cut your yarn, leaving a tail so we can weave it in. Sort of hold it there and just Pull that last one out. It's all connected. It's not going to go anywhere. And that's how you bind off. Now, after you finish your whole scarf, from one end to the other, you'll have a couple of ends to weave in. And there's a couple ways to do that. I like to use one of these bent tip needles. You can see it's got a little bend right there. I just find it a little easier to use. So the first option for weaving in ends is just to catch some of the heads of those stitches across the back of the work. But it's easy to do, but it you can see the tail that's woven in. So it's not so well hidden. All you would do is just catch those heads all along there, just like that. Just randomly catch a few heads, pull that through. And you can see where it's woven in though. So you definitely want this on the wrong side of your work. And then maybe go in a different direction right there, catching some of those stitches. I mean, it does keep it on the back. You can't see it on the front, but you can tell where that tail is for sure. You can see where it's woven in right there. Our other option is called duplicate stitch. And all that means is that it follows the path of the yarn as it travels. You're following the stitches. 
And you can see when you look at a stitch, it goes up and around just like that underneath these other stitches, just in a big loop. And if you follow that path, it keeps the tail hidden. So especially if you want something that's more reversible, you wouldn't see the tail as much. There's it going down this way. Back up around. It hides that tail. It's harder to see than this other one over here. You can see the path that took. This one's a bit harder to see. And it definitely doesn't show through on the front. And especially for a slippery yarn, this is a good way to weave it in. It won't, it, ha it probably won't come out like the other one might if it's a very slick yarn like a silk or cotton. And that's it. So once your scarf is done, you've finished all of those different sections. On here, you'll weave in the ends on yours and you will have a finished scarf, but even better than that, you'll know all of the basics of knitting. You'll know how to knit and purl, and you'll know a basic increase and decrease that you can use in other projects, and you'll have a pretty scarf you can wear. If you like to get a bit nerdy with your knitting, click the subscribe button down below.